So this is the PEG Access Committee meeting for Wednesday, February 28th. And we are going to convene an open session, but uh, then adjourn to um, close and reopen an executive session. So uh, should I repeat the whole executive session? Yeah. Chapter and verse now? Yep. Okay. So we'll be uh, reconvening in executive session pursuant to MGL 30A exemption uh, number six, real property to consider common cash contract. I'm sorry, I think you need a motion to, so could you have somebody else make the motion um, and then have a vote? Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I'm just saying pursue. Okay, so uh, let's then convene in uh, open session and then reconvene in closed yep. session. Yep. Do I have a motion to convene? So moved. Second. Okay, uh, Irwin. How do you vote? Yes. Megan? Yes. Uh, let's see, did uh, Cynthia tune in yet so she can hear us? She looks like she's connecting from another device now. Uh, I see her okay. twice, so we'll give her one second. You can vote, Vince, if you want. Yeah, so, so I say yes. Okay, why don't we convene and have Cynthia join us then. Wow, it's a miracle. Okay. <laughs> oh, we can hear you. Okay. Okay, I'm, good. Oh, getting there. <laughs> so we're just in the process of convening here in open session. So uh, you can say yay and we will be convened. Yay. Okay, so um, we are closing and then reconvening in executive session pursuant to MJL 30A exemption six, real property to consider Comcast contract renewal. So uh, do I have a motion to do so? So moved. I'll move. oh. <laughs> Second. Uh, second. <laughs> okay, so um, Erwin? Aye. Cynthia? Aye. Megan? Hi, did Megan? Uh, she just yes. here. Okay. Just here. Um, Megan, can you? Aye. Okay. She says aye. Okay, I say aye. All right, so we are now convened in executive session. And uh, actually, I didn't see. So All right, so I've disabled the waiting room. Um, it does look like we've got um, somebody here. Let's see, this might be Julie. Hello. Hello. I'm here. Hi. So we just ended executive session. So okay. I'll, Vince, I'll let you uh, take over. Okay, so let's look at our next agenda items here. So we've already established the uh, next meeting date in March. Uh, so our final meeting before town meeting is in April. And uh, does anybody have any preferences? Let me see. I don't know if we had extended into April. That would have been uh, two sessions ago. Um, and we had been meeting uh, on Mondays. And uh, it would have been, I believe, the second or third Monday in April. But does anybody have any uh, preferences? Let me see what the dates are. Second Monday is the eighth, and then the third Monday is the 15th, which is a holiday, Patriots Day.
I had the eighth on my calendar as a says pack meeting question mark, but again, I'm, I'm open. Well, uh, Patriots Day is going to be a pretty busy day for everybody. I think no, yeah. we, we're not. Yeah. Yeah, we're not going to meet on Patriots Day. <laughs> so is the uh, is the eighth a good day? I, you know, as we approach closer to town meeting, I assume everybody's going to get busier and busier here. Sure. Yeah. And then what? What about May? Um, we can go ahead and do that. Uh, I don't think there's any issues at town meeting that come up. Traditionally, uh, we um, change officers, officers. On, on all the committees anyway. Um, last year, we did it late. I forgot what the reason was. We didn't actually change officers until um, June. I think Ms. Carlin was on the FinCom and she had one more meeting or something. I don't. Yeah. But uh, we can go ahead and schedule for uh, for May if that uh, is appropriate, or we can do it at the next meeting. We can try what's, for Monday again. And what's what's the first Monday in May? The sixth, and then the thirteenth. Mm -hmm. I'm open when is our Monday. usual celebration? June? Yeah, not till the summer. Okay. I think it's good to put something in the books and then yeah. people can put it on their calendars. I don't care. 513, 56. Let's do I can't do this, cannot do the six, so let's do the 13th. Okay, 513. There you go. 3 p.m. Okay, it's good for me. Megan, is any issue with you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's assume the 13th. Good. Okay, good. So minutes, I, I excuse have me, some... Matt, Excuse me. I was just looking at our production calendar. Did you say Monday, May 13th? Mm-hmm. And what time would it be? I'm only asking. Three because... o'clock. Okay, because we have Carlisle Town meeting at seven that night. Oh. And we will probably be prepping hours ahead of time. Yeah, I will see. probably be involved in that production. So maybe that you're right. That's probably not a great day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're back a week. The twentieth. Yeah. The twentieth. Of April. May. May 20th. Yes, that's, yes. The studios, yes. No production on that day. Okay. So it's April 4th and May 20th? Okay. All right. Okay, so let's see, the next item is minutes we have um, a couple of months backlogged, uh, we found the, uh, or Julie found uh, the uh, November 23rd meeting. Um, and the January meeting um, was the most recent one that uh, where we had a quorum. Um, I haven't had a chance to um, review that with Megan yet. So uh, let me propose that I review that with Megan and uh, 
hopefully we'll have a complete set for our next meeting. One comment on that is that um, we have been running them um, through the uh, Zoom AI companion. I think there's still some uh, issues there related to how AI companion is um, basically doing in that regard. One of, one of the issues is that um, the uh, people aren't necessarily being identified. So for instance, in the last um, couple of uh, PEG access committee meetings, uh, both uh, Jason and I uh, seem to be combined into one person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and uh, I think that's partly because of microphone placement, but it's partly because it needs to go through a training cycle. You know, where basically you need to, on the same account, um, people need to do at least one manual pass to train the AI companion as to who is speaking. Uh, it's getting better and better and actually being able to recognize individual voices. So that's something actually it's only gonna improve and it looks to me as it's improved quite a bit even in the past two or three months based on, on the rate that uh, you know all of the AI related companies are moving. But it's gonna require a little bit more work on that. It appeared to me, Jason, that you know one step would be to see what the issues really are and when it would be appropriate, you know, maybe for uh, us to get together, not, you know, not as a group, but um, find out in terms of when they are assigned, um, you know, what we could do in conjunction with Zoom to get it working. It will be working sometime soon, but whether that means three months or six months or 12 months is not, not clear at this point, but. I know meetings like this will be a lot easier because we're all on our own individual devices and named. And so it will, will turn out something quite accurate. It's just when we're all in the same room is when it's not quite sure who we are. So anyway, in that context, uh, even, even without the AI companion, um, you know, target with uh, Megan to uh, get up to date on our minutes and uh, and see how fast we can get it going elsewhere. So the next item is MMN broadband update. So Julie, why don't you start with some MMN updates and then I'll follow up with some budget discussions. Sure. So I have some exciting news um, in terms of our student engagement. Uh, the doorbell is ringing. The door continues to be open. There's a lot of activity. Uh, we met with the principal and we uh, we are now going to be on the flex block schedule so that students can come in and create projects with us or get training, create shows. They'll be coming in on Wednesdays for an hour and Fridays for an hour. So we're officially signed up for that. Um, we created a Instagram reel that's going to be posted on the school's Instagram website to just kind of show off what our space looks like and let kids know how they can uh, be involved with us. But more specifically, um, the Chinese club has knocked on the door. The teacher has come here um, and those kids are planning a trip to Taiwan. And they have asked Tori Wisnowski, who is our education coordinator, to come into their classroom and speak to them about how to do storytelling using your iPhone camera when you go on a trip. And she'll also help them edit this video, which we can ultimately air and show with parents. And then the Chinese club also wants to do a podcast about their trip. So that's one exciting example. The next one is uh, we got a call from... Uh, a group of fifth graders who want to do a sports podcast. So I don't know which school they go to. I'll find out. Um, but they're coming here tomorrow for a tour. Um, and then another exciting piece of news. Well, another thing that we're doing that Megan brought to us 
is uh, we are going to be doing a school committee candidate Q&A where our own Megan will be in the studio hosting uh, three candidates for the school committee. Um, she's going to, I guess you want to explain it more, but you'll be getting questions from parents ahead of time, giving those questions to the candidates so they can prepare. And then when they come to the studio, um, you will be hosting and asking them to respond. So those are some of my uh, programming highlights. Julie, what's the date for that? The school committee candidate Q and A back from them um, from the candidates. So we just started doing it yesterday. Okay, um, so you don't quite have a date, but you'll find one yet. Um, so hoping that they can do it. So it's pending their availability, obviously. Okay. okay. Thanks. And then this week. We'll meet the Concord Band at 51 Walden. Um, last weekend, we filmed something for the National Park Service, kind of a ranger training for summer summer programs for them. Um, keep them busy. Hey, Julie, um, where is the WIQ8 studio in regard in, in comparison to the to you, yeah the, the M M studio? Probably four paces away. <laughs> <laughs> So next time you come, I can show you. But if you if you exit our space into the school and you make a left, their door is right there. We we and, share a wall with them. And do, do they? I, mean, I was listening to them. I was just driving down Route Two today, and you know they came up. It's like wow, this is pretty good. They're doing some great yeah. things. Are, do they? Are they live or is everything pre-recorded or? Oh, their their DJ their shows are live. Um, they okay. actually students there. And like I say, next time you come, we can walk over there. Ned would be very happy uh, to give you a tour. But uh, we're doing something with them next, which is exciting. Coming up on Mar Saturday, March 9th, I believe, the radio station is going to be hosting a concert here at school. They call it the WIQH Fest. And they've asked, and this is a perfect way of how we want to engage with our students. So they have students that will be borrowing our camera equipment and filming this student concert here at the high school. So that the, they've got three students that will be um, filming that and using our cameras. Would we ever like broadcast them live? Like just put a camera up and so oh, like you, you see. I mean, during one of their radio shows, bring a camera. Yeah, in. just like, just yeah. put a, have a camera there and we do could a live ask. feed. We could ask. Yeah. I mean, you see that like on sports radio shows, they have their talk show. And it shows up on some crazy channel. Sure. Um, I mean, it's just a way to to engage with students more. Like, hey, we're actually live on two medium. Yeah, that's a great idea. That they're super. And I, know I mean, one of the students does like a political uh, show, like a civics oriented thing. It sounds like it does a really good job. So okay. that might be, you know, a really cool kind yeah. of community. Not that there's anything wrong with just broadcasting a music show, but right. that, that was interesting. No, but we can discuss that with Ned, who is our counterpart over there. And we have a great yeah, that'd be great. Okay. That'd be cool. All right. What's coming up uh, in regard to uh, Patriots Day? I don't have information on Patriots Day yet. Yeah, I mean, this will be Julie's first Patriots Day, but we have usually all hands on deck and we cover the parade and all the events uh, as much as possible. So um, we'll be very involved and It'll be kind of a good dry run for Julie to get ready for the 2025th uh, big celebration. So she'll get to see the, at least how we do it this year. I know the 250th will be different in many ways, but um, just to kind of see it. And we've usually got people um, taking photos and shooting video and just doing B-roll stuff. And then um, we we typically edit that into a, a nice video together, you know, to show the highlights of the events. And so I'm sure we'll do something similar. And coming from Lexington, we definitely did a lot of coverage on Patriots Day. <laughs> so I'm familiar with it. I understand, Jason, that the uh, parades committee is uh, kind of looking at this Patriots Day as kind of a dress rehearsal for uh, 2025. I, I don't know if that involves anything extra. I think maybe in terms of the security. Yeah, um, we are. I mean, there have been many security planning meetings um, going on about the 250th and both in Concord and with other agencies. I know uh, 
members of the GIS team have been helping with maps, with applications that in real time they can close and open roads and see what the impact would be and look at flow of traffic and how to cordon off areas and things like that. And then um, we recently had a MEMA trainer come out and give a training on uh, incident command structure that many people from Lexington and uh, Lincoln and Concord attended um, to be prepared for understanding how these events are going to go. We know there's going to be a lot of state and federal partners involved in this, um, Secret Service, uh, things like that. So, um, yes, I think that, you know, my understanding of the parade committee is also um, I, we built a custom application for them with a form intake and a, a SharePoint or Microsoft list on the back end that, that does some pretty cool things that they used to just get paper applications and it was difficult for them all to share information or sort of report back on data. So um, we, I know they've improved on that and they're getting ready for anticipating a lot more people uh, next year um, in, in doing that. So that this, this was a more scalable approach than what they were doing in paper. Um, I, I've had uh, one other request for some coverage. I don't know if request is exactly the right word, but um, it has to do with the uh, prison outreach group who uh, I, I hadn't realized this before because I called Sam Williams a few weeks ago just to find out what he knew about, you know, the closing of the prison. But it, it turns out that you know, the prison outreach group actually, um, you know, is not directly impacted by that. Obviously, they're going to be impacted as far as the Concord maximum security prison is concerned, but not the minimum security prison over at the farm and also elsewhere in the state. So it turns out that the board, and I don't know much of the board that oversees um the outreach committee is composed of Concord people, but the chair of that turns out to be Liz Rust. Mm -hmm. So uh, she's very involved with that and uh, has, uh, you know, kind of suggested maybe some way to see how MMN can, um, you know, actually uh, do some uh, programming work for the outreach committee and certainly even kind of in the context of Concord, uh, the uh, Fife and Drum restaurant over there is pretty unique. As a matter of fact, as I understand it, it's the only one in the country. And uh, that's gonna remain open. You know, it's called the farm. It's not clear exactly what other activities are going on over at the farm. <laughs> you know, they used to have quite a herd over there. Um, but in any case, uh, you know, I said, I check in uh, with you and Julie in particular to see, um, you know, how MMN might get involved with that. Yeah, I mean, I would ask Liz to reach out and we can schedule a call and find out more about their program and what, what the needs are and we're happy to help. Okay, uh, yeah, so I, I did tell Liz that, you know, I, I get back to her, so I'll copy you and- Yeah see where that can possibly well, i have a good relationship with liz i work with her and help her team and been doing migrations and upgrades and we support their it so we're very familiar with them and julie uh i think it might be worth commenting on the uh, meeting that we had over at coa yes um i was invited to the coa to have a meeting um with vince and uh, Assistant Town Manager Jessica, um, also the interim COA Director Eileen, and two other uh, residents um, who are um, trying to get the assisted listening devices improved in all of our rooms, in all of our town buildings. Um, so we talked about how, you know, from our end at Miniman Media, we are doing upgrades to those rooms, which might be kind of like the root of the problem. Um, but uh, we learned from Eileen that she has a $22 million grant um, that she was just awarded. And with that, she's going to be getting guidance from an acoustician at UMass Boston, um, where they're going to come to the COA and take a look at what uh, this room setup is, is there and make suggestions on what, pro of what to purchase, what type of audio equipment to purchase to help the hearing impaired. 
Yeah, it sounds like there's quite a bit of overlap there, Jason, I know, and you know, what you know, you looked at over there, clearly, in particular that, that main meeting room, you know, the equipment's very out of date. The microphones never seem to be in the right place when, when there's a meeting going on. Yeah. Well, we're working on it. When we get to the budget, we'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? No, go ahead, Megan. Okay, sorry about that. I just want to say, um, I just Julie, thank you so much. And Tori, you guys have been killing it. It's I'm so impressed. And um, Tori edited my dad's show, and it looks amazing. And I can't wait for more to come. So thank you so much for being so available. And this is so exciting for me and for a lot of people. Oh, we love it. This is great for us. It's original programming. You know, a Concord resident who has a fresh idea filming at his house. <laughs> it's great. That's exactly what Peg Access is all about. I don't oh. think it's ready to be posted yet, but I can ask her. I don't think it's done yet. He's in Columbia, so he's coming back tonight and he'll look at it tomorrow. Okay, and great. And I think it'll be ready to go. Okay, so great. Ready. Yeah. Well, moving on, I don't know, uh, Jason, uh, where you want to go. Yeah, I think this would be a great but, time. So um, that can be the um, sort of MMN operational update. And I just wanted to kind of highlight a few things on the budget. So um, I'm going to share my screen just to kind of walk through this very briefly. My thought was, um, you know, go through an overview now um, and then let this kind of percolate with you guys while we continue to work on it. If there are any changes that we know we have to make, we'll send a new version. But then if you guys have suggestions or changes, feel free to send them in before our next meeting. And then on March 11th, um, ahead of that, we'll obviously send you, and hopefully not the night before, but a few days before, we'll send you our final proposed budget. And then at that meeting, um, we'll review it once more and highlight any differences from today. And then um, we'd be looking for, to have you guys vote to you know recommend that so that then at the Finance Committee hearing, um, we can mention that the, the committee voted to recommend the budget. So um, let me just share my screen. Uh, all right, can you guys see this? Yep. Okay, great. Um, so this is um, a really large Excel spreadsheet that finance um, used to maintain and create. And um, it was kind of a collaborative process. Unfortunately, our budgeting purchasing director and our budget analyst left the town last year and those positions still have not been filled. So we've been kind of doing a lot of this work on our own. And um, luckily I've gone through a full budget cycle with MMN and a few with the town and uh, 14 and municipal government. So uh, it's not like we're just, uh, you know, um, blind leading the blind here, but uh, we, there are still some numbers that we're waiting for finance on. And one of them, which is a big one, is our fund balance. Um, they're still auditing the fiscal 23 data, which is impacting some calculations, but we will, by the time we have the final budget, be able to, to provide an update on the exact fund balance. If you'll remember, it was around 1.4 million last year, and we anticipate it's going to be around that same number now. Um, we last year's budget did dip into it a little bit and that was intentional because in the negotiations with Comcast, the committee felt it was a, a good strategy to not be sitting on too large a pile of money while we cry to Comcast for more money. So that happened at our in, in a PAC meeting last year. And so we did move ahead some capital purchases to fiscal 24. And um, and so we, we continue, we, we will continue to do that this year. Um, the first thing you'll notice is that we're anticipating relatively flat revenue from Comcast this year. Uh, that is based on our last four quarters of um, revenue that we've been getting. It is erratic. It jumps around a few thousand, but it's been pretty consistent over the last two and a half, three years. Um, it is a little bit down from 23, but this number was estimated and it is looking like it's going to be a little bit higher. Um, it's probably going to be about 326,000 in fiscal 24 
and our last four quarters are about um, 325,000, but we're just being conservative with the 320 for now until um, finance has any further updates. Um, Carlisle is also, you'll see it's a little bit higher. That's because the 20,000 was kind of a, a, an estimate. I didn't prepare the 23 budget, but I did the 24 and at the time 23 data wasn't finalized. And so we didn't really have visibility, but now that we do, we took the last 15 months build and got the average monthly amount and then multiply that by 12. And that's where we got the 32,000. Carlisle pays both a fixed flat amount every month for access for their residents to use the studio and uh, borrow equipment, just like Concord residents. And then the other uh, amount is uh, actual hours that we covered uh, for them for their government meetings or events. And then the miscellaneous revenue is um, any events that are not open to the public and that the, the video, the final production is not going to be posted and accessible to the public, we will help with those productions, but we charge um, money for those. And so that is a small amount of money that we make each year on those productions. We're anticipating a little bit more in 25 because of the 250th. They have some money. They want to do marketing and want to create some custom videos. And they are going to be looking at some outside firms to do that. And they probably will do that for some. But if it makes sense and we have the bandwidth, we would love to help them out in creating some content for that. Um, you'll see that the biggest driver of the budget is personnel expenses. And right now we have three full-time staff. We have Julie, the media manager. We have Matt, who's a production manager, and we have Tori, who's our senior producer slash education coordinator. Um, Matt elevated into Mark Pauly's old position, and so we still have Matt's existing position in the budget, though it's not filled now. We're still kind of um, looking to see what is going to be the best use for that uh, position, uh, but we continue to budget for it in fiscal 25. You'll see that the personnel costs are very modest increases over the previous fiscal year. Um, we've gotten a little bit more accurate with our videographer um, estimates in terms of their actual hours worked. Um, and so that's what the personnel costs are. Everything else, um, the non-personnel services, and even all this data, you can see in a more granular level, a little bit further in the document. Um, I'm not going to go through every single line, but I will say that um, some of the, the the lines really were not um, we, we had very few buckets basically. And so there were fewer buckets with more money in them, which doesn't help us with our planning and our budgeting. And it doesn't help the community with transparency as to where the money's going. So this year we went to the chart of accounts and grabbed about 15 or 20 new accounts that are you know within the town, but that we were not using to budget and we added them to the budget so that we could be more granular with actually how we're spending this money and how we anticipate spending the money. So this will also help us put together next year's budget because you know now we have some budgets that are 2000 and they're overexpended by 6000 and then we have other budgets that are 12000 that we only spend $500 of. So this will hopefully result in a lot more um, accuracy when it comes to like what are we actually spending money on. Um, the general fund services, the town has to pay a little bit for facilities and HR because they help out the MMN and MMN acts as an enterprise. So you'll see that the total operating expenses and when we um, plug that in, we're gonna, there's nothing really here that's different. This does show you the, the FTE count and how that changes. Um, but here would be the, <clears throat> the um, net income. Now, um, this does include a staff member that's budgeted for around $68,000. It's not currently filled. So if you take that position out, you know, it's definitely like a level funded budget, but we were trying to be more accurate with the needs that we had this year and um, dip less into sort of money that was allocated for capital or other things like had been done in the distant past. Um, when we get into the sort of uh, I'm going to skip capital and come right back to it. This is the actual sheet that shows every single line. Um, and so you can see that some lines don't have any history um, before them. So like telephone or network supplies or audiovisual supplies, there's no budget data in the past. And that's because those buckets just weren't there. And so we might have had something like office supplies, but um, you know they were buying all sorts of camera equipment from it or 
we had um, the, a, a famous bucket that was always really big with other professional technical services and everything would come out of that. And it's just really hard to put together a sound budget when you don't uh, you know, allocate things to different accounts. Um, so one thing I'll mention, um, social security, the town is moving away from that. Um, we should be op, um, contributing or, or allowing our part-time limited status employees to participate in OBRA, which is a state-run program like a pension that they can they can actually take with them. But you know, if you're paying Social Security, that means the town or the organization is also paying it. So those costs go down. The ones that are highlighted in yellow are because those are based on actual um, historical data. Last year, we didn't have anybody on health plans at the time. And so um, we didn't have any budget for that. But this year, um, we, we put back the sort of the, the base amount for one person, but we have to kind of do some analysis on that. Um, some of the other things that we're doing is um, this past year, a couple of our employees went to the, um, the training up in Vermont, or um, not training, but I mean, it was all sorts of things. It was training, information, awards ceremony. Um, and so those are really important things, both to get our um, content out there and also to give our employees some really good information to bring back and that was never really formally budgeted so you'll see in this kind of red red boxed um, area some of the um, really modest conference and and uh, training budget that we have um, now I'll jump back up to the capital which was up here it's bigger so um, you'll remember in fiscal 24 we grabbed the um, townhouse upgrades and move them from 25 over because uh, we wanted to spend more capital and uh, draw down the fund balance a little bit. One of the notes I put in my email to the committee was that um, unfortunately the broadcast server upgrades have taken many months longer than we had hoped and that delay is uh, really based on procurement and the town um, you know, not really having a lot of resources to help with procurement anymore. Those two employees that I mentioned who are no longer here played a big role in procurement and RFPs and RFQs. And so we've been doing a lot ourselves. We are very close to issuing some RFQs uh, in the next week. But um, as a result of that, we're going to be spending the next few months on this upgrade project. And the town, the town manager's office that was working on the orientation and setup of the townhouse, we needed that information before we could bring in vendors and, and gather specs for that project. And so for those two reasons, that project is behind. And at this point, um, when, when we have to create the final budget document, we may be um, putting that money back into 25 and we just would leave it unexpended in 24. And since we're an enterprise, the money would just go right back into the fund balance and then could be reappropriated next year. Um, or if it was capital, so it's normally capital carries over fiscal years, but depending on there's like there's real capital and then there's not real capital. And so we just have to check with the town accountant and figure out if this project can just sit on the books. And if not, um, we'll move it to 25 and let the money go back and close those uh, appropriations. But either way, um, what we do plan to do is, as Julie mentioned, we have a lot of people from the school super engaged now. Our studio equipment and cameras are very old. Our teleprompters are not in great shape. And we have people who are interested in some productions, but we are sometimes setting up manual cameras because the equipment there isn't working right. So we have um, a, a degree of money set aside to replace a lot of equipment in that room, uh, along with the computers for employees um, that would be replaced. So that would be three laptops essentially, and then associated peripherals and monitors and things. Um, and so that's what we're proposing for the capital for this year. One of the other notes that I made um, in my memo was that we've been talking about a vehicle for a long time. If you'll remember, um, the deputy town manager purchased a Nissan Leaf for MMN a few years ago. Um, we're happy to report that that vehicle that was really being unused was purchased by another department in town. And um, there was a reserve, there was a, a sort of interdepartmental transfer and a journal entry to move that money back to MMN. So, um, you know, the car was not big enough for equipment 
And the whole point of having it was to be able to put production equipment in it and bring it to somewhere. So um, when we found ourselves, when I got involved in MMN and found ourselves with this vehicle we couldn't use, it was kind of frustrating, but uh, the town manager found a great solution for a department that needed an electric vehicle and and um, and that suited their needs really well. So uh, we're looking at a production van or something that could be used to keep equipment in it and would be locked. And um, that way, if there was an event or something was happening, we could easily just get in and, and go and cover that event. It would be really helpful for the 250th and not just for the parade, but also for all the other events that are planned and the speeches and the conversations and the lectures and the outdoor you know, festivities that are planned. Um, we do have some capability to go live from various places in town. And this would be really great to have a, a remote vehicle that could be driven around. The town does have an electric first vehicle policy. So we'd obviously start with seeing what we could get for electric. There are um, Ford Transit vans that are electric. And then the town's next priority is plug-in hybrid and then hybrid and then gasoline and then diesel. So we'll be working with uh, the sustainability director and uh, procurement on that. Terry, you got a question? Yeah, I have several questions. So um, the vehicle is showing in... Um... FY27. The the bucket here is 27. We're talking about and figuring out if it makes sense to do that sooner. Right. I think um, I um, agree with what you did last year. Try to get that $1.4 million balance yep. looking yep. lower. And we need the vehicle now for the, for the upcoming 250th. So yep. great. Um, thank you for being so transparent and moving the line items around and making it easier. Um, my other question was back about the social security and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So those numbers in yellow, yep. can you go back to the previous slide? The capital? No, um, the previous budgets. Oh, yeah. Right, I didn't see where they show up in the budget. Um, so basically, these numbers in these documents up here are fed from the detail that exists in this worksheet. So you mm -hmm. start here and you enter all this information, right. and then the totals in these columns will feed. Right, right. All Can of you this. just go back um, to that slide? Um, this one? Yeah, that one. So, oh, I see. Okay, okay. I was just looking in the wrong place. Great, yeah. I get it. Thank you very much. Um, those are all my questions. Okay. Um, so, yes, and I think that, you know, originally when we had set the capital plan, um, we kind of had a target for, you know, what we were estimating for each year. And obviously some years you're going to spend a little less, some years you're going to spend a little more. Sometimes you have equipment that you replace only every, every 10 years. And so, you know, you might have a big year, but then you might have several smaller years in a row. So we're trying to balance, like, you know, our goal is to have a very smooth enterprise hearing, very smooth town meeting, and to present a sustainable picture. And we think we can, um, but we also agree, Terry, that having a large fund balance is at this point a liability. And we now have staff like Julie who can actually make use of these things. And we, I think it would be a real big community asset to have some of these things. So that is the direction we're moving in is to try to do more and not just sit on it. But we also like, you know, in your mind, buying a vehicle is like you call a dealership and say, yeah, we want another vehicle. But as you know, the reality is like a million things. And if it's a production van, it's going to be outfitted and it's going to be, you know, equipment would go in it. And so we, we're figuring some of that out now to sort of see what, you know, if 40000 is the price of the vehicle and then 5000 modifications and 5000 for equipment or whatever. So we're just trying to figure out all of those pieces. And then, um, but we are definitely open to moving that up um, into 25. Great. Hey, son, yeah. uh, two questions. One is I'm curious, does the town, this is just an aside, does the town get the federal rebate, like the $7,500 or because it's a town, they don't, they don't get it? Yeah, so originally no, but now, I mean, if it's a, if it's a, if a purchase of a new vehicle, I think, cause we did buy some, um, 
I think the F-150 Lightnings that were purchased by Public Works, I think they were pursuing that tax credit. But there's this new elective pay thing under the IRA, and that's connected to solar and um, these um, credits for vehicles. They are actually allowing us to participate in that. And we've enrolled in that program primarily for like CMLP for solar panels and um, other right. departments for things. So um, yes, it seems like if we could if we could do that, we'd get that um, as long as the vehicle itself qualifies for the- Sure, sure. Yeah. Hey, could you go back to page one sure. of the budget? So my, just so I understand, so it looks like there's about $67,000 that essentially is coming out of the capital fund to fund the difference. Right, it is coming out of the fund. Yeah, correct. Yep. Yeah. So one thing I would love is because it looks like there are some non-capital funds. There's some capital funds being used for non-capital purposes. Is that a fair assessment? I mean, generally, we try not to do that. And you know, in the town side, when you're talking about general fund, there's a hard line there. Um, within an enterprise, it's a little bit different, but. Generally, like when we do these, when we have these projects in the budget to this point, they're already like we've we've received quotes. We know what we're doing. Right. If there's a little bit of money, the the goal is that if you budget twenty five thousand for a capital project and you only spend twenty, then the rest just goes back into the fund balance sure. appropriated the next year. That's the goal. So what I what I would love to see, and I don't know whether these Comcast approval is that there be some money set aside to do marketing because mm. I think. You know, we're finally at the point now that, you know, with Julie on board and some momentum, it'd be great to just let townspeople know more about, particularly the production side. I mean, there's the whole consuming of product of, yeah. of the video, of the channel, but there's also letting people know about, you know, you can use these facilities and to right. not spend some money on marketing just seems a real miss. Yeah, we're, we're so one nice thing is Comcast recently changed one of our channel numbers, which in our contract says that they'll reimburse us up to $1,000 for anything that we have to print as a result. Right. So that means business cards and signs and you know anything, decals for windows, right. as long as it has the new channel on it, it can qualify. So we're, we're pursuing that. In here we have between clothing and you know other, uh, materials we have about twenty five hundred dollars, but we can certainly take a look at that, and I can work with Julie to see if there's some other creative things we could think about doing. Um, you know, I think we have some things um, like tent um, shades and you know table skirts that have the logo and and name on them and things like that. But there could be more direct marketing things, or when we attend some festivals or fairs or uh, you know, events in town, we could bring some things that people could take that would remind them of the channels or of, you know, our website or things like that. So, yeah. Yeah. And I'm also thinking just, you know, using the bridge. I mean, I'm you know, right. to pay for it, but, you know, if, if, you know, that's one thing that everyone in town gets. So to yeah. be able to once a quarter, take out a quarter page ad, I don't know what the numbers are. Yeah. You know, um, I that's think would be. Question. Yeah. I like that idea. And and even the one time, like we could mention the channels and the lineup changing, that could be reimbursed by Comcast. Yeah. So I think that's something we could absolutely do right now. Yeah. Great. Jason, uh, going back to the uh, townhouse upgrades. Yep. Again, uh, I I remember um, you know when that got started, and um, one of the segments of that was that assistive listening equipment mm -hmm. and um, I, I believe Kate had a initial budget of that particular piece uh, for uh, $80,000 and that wasn't exclusively for the townhouse it was you know just to try out that equipment and all of the other venues that um, might end up utilizing that so in terms of what MMN provides um, how much of the uh, equipment for all of the town venues mm -hmm. uh, does how much of that is involved with the MMN budget versus any other buckets of money in the town? So generally we try to limit our involvement to the audio and visual experience in the room that helps with coverage. So, you know, 
obviously audio in room audio blurs the lines because if we don't do in-room audio and it creates feedback, it might make our video unusable. So we obviously care about in-room audio, but we care most about capturing a good signal and audio for the people who are gonna be able to watch it on our channel. But we definitely are collaborative with the town and trying to um, maximize the coordination and minimize the amount of double work that we have to do. So there has been a desire to explore reorganizing the hearing room and making further improvements to the acoustics in that room. And so, for instance, if the town wanted to hang some fabric from the ceiling or add drapes or carpet or something to make the room more acoustic friendly, that would not fall under the MMN budget. But if we wanted to put some better speakers in the room that would eliminate feedback and, you know, um, better cameras or camera equipment, then that would fall under the MMM budget. Uh, another question in regard to, uh, you know, Comcast delving into, you know, the expenditures in that reserve. Um, mm -hmm. Since, you know, there is one other entity in town that provides uh, internet service, um, is. Comcast likely to raise any issues about the um, basically utilizing that reserve for something that may benefit other internet providers? The MMN reserve? I mean, that wouldn't be possible under how these accounts and these organizations are set up. And also when we talk to them, they never bring up internet. To them, like their division of cable is so there's such a hard wall there between the rest that it never comes up with internet. Um, the only, I mean, when we started negotiations, they said they were gonna look up our tax returns thinking that we were a nonprofit. So they they really are not paying super close attention to MMN, not even realizing it was kind of a town department and not a 513C. But um, I think that because we are a town department, because our budgets are very transparent, because we participate in the audit of the town's finances, um, they don't, they can't use the same leverage that they can sometimes with not-for-profits when they can say, um, well, the community doesn't really know or know how you spend your money or trust that you're spending on important things, so we don't need to give you a lot of money. So they've, they've really not worried much about that at all. And, you know, they're just trying to basically be honest and say, we'd like to, um, limit the impact on our customer bills. Yeah, actually, I wasn't asking a rhetorical question, question because although it's kind of interesting in that um, that reserve actually carried over from the previous not-for-profit, right. <laughs> as, as you know. Right. And uh, so it's kind of been sitting there and to the extent that Comcast hasn't paid attention to it, you know, well and good. I you know, just wanted to make sure that they yeah. weren't starting to do something else. Um, okay, so I'll wrap up the budget conversation just by saying, please send me, you know, emails individually. Don't correspond as a group, obviously, to violate open meeting law. But if you have thoughts, suggestions, feedback, let us know. We'll be putting together a final draft that we'll send to the board ahead of the next meeting on March 11th. And then at that time, I'll highlight any differences, mention any feedback incorporated as a result, and then would be asking for the committee to vote to recommend the budget. And then Vince, if you could uh, maybe attend the hearing and, and the event that um, you know, you're asked to, to weigh in as a committee that you could just mention that you voted however you voted. I, I will do so. And as a matter of fact, I, you know, I think that uh, you know, the committee as a whole will you know, make some kind of a joint vote or recommendation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, we are at 4.30 here. I do have another appointment. Um, I do want to bring up a po possible options and changes in the mission statement, but, you know, I think that can be deferred maybe even until after town meeting. Um, there is a annual town report that hopefully is somewhere on its way to the printer and things like that, that um, uh, we circulated late just because of the deadlines involved in doing that. And I guess it was basically 
I circulated it late, or Carlin and I, because she was responsible for the first half of 2023, and I was responsible for the last half. But anyway, I copied that before, but I'll copy people again just for their information. I don't think I heard any issues on that before. Um, I'm hearing some background noise, but... Uh, um, that's... Um, yes. This is Terry. I saw the town report. It's printed. It's at the townhouse now. Oh, okay. Good. So it's probably online, too. Oh, all right. Okay, well, everybody uh, be sure to get a copy of it. Uh, okay, so... Um, are there? Do we have any... Uh, Lee is on coverage. I don't see. Do we have anybody in the audience here, Jason? Um, nope. Okay, and I don't see. Is there anybody that you can see from the public? No. I see some participants currently here. Well, I propose that we adjourn. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Maybe they're gone already. <laughs> somebody wants to stay. Megan, Megan said it. Her volume is. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, Cynthia. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes. Irwin. Irwin dropped off. And... Oh, okay. Megan. Yes. Okay, I agree. So we are adjourned. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. See you in March. Thank you. Bye. Bye.